Um, Sounds great. Well, hi, welcome everybody to another session in our Women Lead online forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. And I'm Patty Vargas, I'll be your host today. And today we have a subject matter expert in the hot seat who's willing to say, yeah, go ahead, just ask me anything. Now our session today lasts for just under an hour. And if you've joined with video, you'll be able to see our guests and our attendees alike. You might wanna put yourself on mute at this point and then unmute yourself when you wanna ask questions. Those are always welcome. Uh, we like this to be more of a back and forth conversational type of approach, more than just a, a Q&A kind of thing. But if there is something you'd like to ask anonymously, just put it in the chat to me and I'd be happy to share it for you. So our topic today is adapt your marketing and advertising to reflect the times that we're in. And I am super excited to introduce today's subject matter expert, Jared Hart, the CEO of HMVD Empire. And let me tell you a little bit about him. So with a natural talent for staying ahead of his competition and a drive for achievement, Jarrett made a name for himself in corporate management, sales, and marketing, specializing in consulting companies with targeting high intent audiences with custom created content to maximize conversions. And he created HMBD from experience as a solution to all the problems that he saw companies facing as they tried to evolve into the future of sales and marketing in the digital age, while still, you know, I guess basically just trying to do their day jobs, right? And often, you know, we find that people are doing things that they possibly shouldn't be uh, focusing their time and energies and money on. So we're gonna learn a little bit more about that. So without further ado, I'm handing it over to Jarrett. So take it. Thank you so much for the great introduction. Uh, it's so great to meet you guys. Anyone I haven't met before at one of the events or anything like that. Um, like she said, a little bit about myself. Uh, HBD, uh, it's, it's an acronym for a really long business name, Heart Marketing and Business Development. Um, but that really drives exactly what we do. We do everything from the marketing and advertising and sales side to the business development side, where we help companies literally go through step-by-step -step with their processes and make sure um, that they're set up for success. Because to me, uh, any campaign or project, whether it's marketing or advertising or sales, whatever it is, um, pretty much the key factors to its success is being able to cohesively implement it. Uh, so if I'm running the best marketing campaign in the universe, right, I, but my sales team isn't on the same page and they answer the phone and they have no idea what's going on or there's some disconnect, I mean, it, we're, wasting, we're wasting money instantly. You know, you're, you're affecting ROI. Um, or if you have the most beautiful creative in the world, I produce you a Scorsese movie of your product and it comes down and Jaws comes up and eats it and it's, it's amazing, but then no one sees it. it, it you you spent $30,000 on Jaws eating your product, but you, no one saw it, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm, we really just don't focus on any key part. Uh, you know, we're more of a full service integrated company um, as far as what we do. And that is just because of that same ideology. Uh, we don't believe that your branding and messaging and delivery can be consistent if um, it's not cohesive, if the design, the video, production, uh, advertising, retargeting, copyright, web development, if it's not all pushing one united message, mm -hmm. um, then you get a customer on, they see one thing on Yahoo, you know, one thing on Yelp and one thing over here in different branding, uh, you're confusing your customer instead, instead of selling them before you ever meet them, mm -hmm. you're actually set, you're selling your uh, competition's products for them. Um, anytime you have misinformation, any, anything that's not cohesive. So really what we focus on is the end result. Um, we make beautiful creative. It's all custom. Everything we do is custom. We make, uh, you know, we do all the technical stuff, but at the end of the day, it's about project management and communication. And that's the same thing with training our own staff, with training the staff of our clients to use our software. Um, you know, it has to be hands-on and it has to be involved. Mm -hmm. And I noticed uh, the same thing, just as me as a business owner running my own marketing. You know, I've taken our company from one person, just me, 
um, in 2016 to over 100 and you know 150 employees, W2 employees, you know, here in San Diego, um, with dozens and dozens of clients. And the reason why I've been able to do that is uh, teamwork, top to bottom, and communication. Um, I haven't been able to do anything by myself. Um, everything takes a team. I can graphic design. I could web develop. You know, I can write copy, I can sell, I can advertise, but I don't do any of those things for my own company. You know, mm -hmm. I have a team built to do that. You know, I have graphic design teams, I have video teams, I have copyright teams, I have web developer teams. Um, as a business owner, you're supposed to be the, you're supposed to be the visionary. You know, you're supposed to be able to uh, imagine great things and then you're, be able, you're supposed to be able to accomplish those things by having, being able to delegate and build teams. So the most important thing as a business owner is being able to build teams. Okay, this is the project I have in mind. I want to develop a new product line of skincare. Okay, I need someone who knows about bottling and, and shelf space, right? To put it on the shelves. I need someone who knows about uh, my shipping when I'm doing direct online. I need someone who knows about the packaging, what size, you know, how is the graphic design on there? How do they actually label? How do they get applied to the bottles? Um, there's a million different stages that go into launching a product or launching a service. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, anything can be done by yourself, but really the true mark of a business owner is how well you can build teams to amplify your work. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So Jarrett, and I would imagine um, that business owners have their plans all set for the coming year, you know, they've got their budget set. I'm gonna, um, you know, uh, dedicate 30% of my budget to marketing. And a percentage of that is gonna be digital, a percentage of that is print and all of these plans that we all make. Mm -hmm. What happens when it's like, like it is right now, where everything's been turned upside down? Yeah. So, I mean, you definitely have to pivot digital uh, right now, especially everything is direct to consumer. Um, so basically, I mean, if you're looking for, you know, if it's a specific question about a specific product, it's like, I could like, if you, if you guys have any things like specific, I could really answer like really, really well on how to pivot and maybe get, still make profits, you know, but like for instance, if I was selling uh, anything, I mean, if I'm a restaurant right now, right, if I'm a restaurant right now and I'm closed, right? Um, still though, you have to realize that California has lifted the ban on delivering alcohol. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everyone is at home drinking, <laughs> you know, uh, I would make a ton of money because I'm going to instantly pivot. I'm on every single, which the thing is I wouldn't be pivoting because if I owned a restaurant, I would already be doing this except not delivering alcohol with all my other deliveries before the law was just lifted. So I would be on Grubhub and Uber Eats. I would be on uh, Amazon Fresh. I mean, every single little thing you could get on as far as the digital space to sell your product. A, even if you sell uh, brick and mortar in the first place, you should always sell direct to consumer online. Mm -hmm. Unless your product is for some reason, um, unless it's this perishable, we deal with some perishable products, right? That can't be shipped, you know? And we still, you know, advertise online, you know, to local markets, so. Um, if you're not pivoted to the digital space to be reaching your customers and doing direct to, to consumer sales, A, right now, this is the time you should be doing it. Um, all full bore, start your website, I mean, get your social media going. If you're low budget, the easiest thing to do is if you're selling products, uh, start a Facebook, okay? Let's make your Facebook page. You can actually put your whole store in Facebook. You can put your entire shop in there. Um, you can integrate it to your Instagram so you can link products through Instagram so people can purchase directly through Instagram. Um, and there's a lot of things you can just do just through the social media platforms if you're, if you're a product company. Um, but like I said, just pivoting to online and being able to really deliver because the key to beating your competition always, not just right now, is being able to deliver the solutions your clients or your customers are looking for in the easiest, fastest way possible maintaining the mo highest margins for your business. So what's the highest margin direct to consumer mm -hmm. end of end of story. Is it cheaper for you? Even if you're a consultant, is it cheaper for you to, for someone to call you and Hey, I got your card somewhere. I saw a flyer and I would like to set up an appointment or they leave you a voicemail or whatever they do. You text back and forth, you make an appointment, you go to coffee, you have a conversation, you know, maybe you move on to a next meeting. Maybe you don't. 
Now, is that high margin or is that high time waste? That's extremely high time waste. Mm -hmm. Now, in that same, in that same thing, I pre-record a video, okay? Um, it's me saying, hey, you know, I'm Jared Hart, CEO of Hart Marketing Business Development. Um, we specialized in custom automated solutions for this, 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 right? And uh, quick, and it's directly to, let's say, uh, dentists, or it's directly to a very specific market, and it's five seconds. I, I use a video emailing software, right? I get these directly to tons of inboxes with scheduled links, right? So they can watch my video, it's five, 10 seconds, instantly see if they're interested, schedule a book an appointment, instantly schedules it on Zoom and we're in a video conference the next day or the next day. I didn't have to waste gas driving somewhere, I didn't have to buy a cup of coffee because I put my coffee in a thermos that keeps it for hot forever, right? And, and I can literally make millions of dollars from my living room in that fashion. I have a green screen behind me, right? I mean, uh, that, that's, it, 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 it's quick. And then anyway, you can cut out waste of time, of effort, of, of cost. I cut it. I mean, I, we built our entire company from day one. Maybe it's because I'm a, you know, I came in, I'm very young, you know, and I came in, I grew up playing video games and, and on messenger and all these things. It wasn't like new to me to I instantly automatically when I opened my company, I was working corporate going all over the planet. And whenever I was in office, I was in this, I, I, you know, I had a big corner office, but I mean, it's, it's the worst. I hate driving up to Escondido or wherever it is and traffic in the whole nine yards. So when I, uh, uh, the first thing I did when I developed my company was develop it and design the entire thing to be completely operational with every single employee working remote, mm -hmm. every single one, because that's how people are most effective. They do better work when they're happy, they're in their own environment. And, you know, so if you can optimize, if you build your business to optimize the happiness of yourself, of your employees and optimize the happiness of the customer, which means delivering to them what they're like solving their problems. Cause that's all customers want you to do, solve my problem. If I need to, if I need my toast to be toasted, I buy a toaster. If you sell toasters, you're solving the problem of toast needing to be toasted, right? So if you're solving their problems already, why not solve them direct to consumer online, you know, to me. You know, I, I was talking to somebody, um, this morning and we, we were just talking about how business is going to change because of this. You know, I, I realize everybody's all doom and gloom about everything going on, but at the same time, <clears throat> there's some really good stuff coming out of this as well. And one of those things is how much work can be done remotely, how much work can be done, um, uh, you know, from your home or online, or how can you streamline some of those things, you know? And so I think that when everything is lifted, we're not going to go back to business as usual. I think business as usual is going to be changed, you know? Yeah. People used to have a fear of it. Um, for some reason, all these, uh, all the, you know, old school way of doing things, is I wanna be able to sit in my office and look out my office window to see you in your office to know that you're working. But the thing is you have to realize I've worked in an office, like I've managed hundreds of employees inside of a small space. And like, I could be playing Galica on my computer just as easily as I could be working. Just cause I'm in an office, you can see me. Doesn't mean I'm accomplishing a high amount of work, right? I also know for a fact that uh, office politics is a huge, is a huge thing in companies, right? I know uh, I've always been a high exceller. I've always exceeded, right? I've always gotten into positions, advanced very quickly because the thing is, is when you're doing something, it's not, uh, a lot of times you won't even be recognized for it. And the reason why I've exceeded very quickly is because I very quickly understand what bosses were above me were going to recognize good work, right? And then the companies that I understood, they weren't gonna advance me for me personally excelling and being able to show it. I left them for other jobs really quickly and found people who promoted on, uh, you know, excel, like exceeding, you know, if succeeding makes you excel, but it's not always like that in the office environment. To me, it's very weird though, because people have always been kind of scared, like thinking you're not gonna get work done at home. But to me, it's, it's the exact opposite because like, let's say I give you all the same project. Okay. I say, you guys are all web developers. You know, I say, I need this amount of stuff done this week. Okay. I need this exact amount. It's a measurable object. Okay. And you work eight hours a day. Okay. 
At the end of that week, if I have 20 people do that task, I know exactly who's excelling, who's not excelling, right? This guy, these 10 people finished the homepage of this website build. These 10 people are this far. You know, it's very easy if you set up structures for monitoring work progress, not by hours, but by completion. Because you can clock in and work for all eternity. I don't care. I don't care if you, my developers work at night. My customer service people have to work nine to five, Monday through Friday. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that, that's a thing, you know, but at the same time, uh, there's deliverables that they're measured by, you know? So I don't care if you worked eight hours or a hundred hours this week, the deliverables, so it shouldn't matter. You know, you should always stay within budget, which your budget for the week is 40 hours, right? And you should always complete all the week's projects, you know? So Jared, here's a, a question that came in in the chat um, and it's from Elizabeth and she says, I'm a sole proprietor psychologist. What specific things do I want to be doing um, in the online marketing world now that I have come from brick and mortar to telehealth? And Elizabeth, if I don't say that right, make sure you correct me there. And the only tangible she really has is a book. So what, what advice could you give her? You can do some really cool things, actually. Um, there's billion dollar uh, therapy businesses built on video therapy. Um, and 100% like what, if I was a, uh, now let me get this right, uh, psychologist, right? What I would be doing to sell my product is one, I would be branding myself as an expert through video because people really only, you know, it's a very connection based thing. If they want to talk to you, right? Uh, you obviously are credentialed. And so, and everyone in your, co everyone in your competition is credentialed. So the differentiator in your field is going to be your personal, uh, ability to connect with people. So I would definitely connect with my audience through video, maybe make some like general online courses, like uh, how to cope uh, with how to cope with quarantine living, um, how to uh, self help type stuff, you know, how to get started, you know, the, the kind of stuff you really know, and that people can go through and you know, um, small portions, you know, five, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it is, um, and then, so you kind of catch people on the, on the branding yourself as an expert through social media, uh, through online advertising, and you can literally even do this. So like, let's say I'm searching, um, I need a, uh, I need a, um, uh, a therapist. I'm sorry. I'm probably getting the technical term wrong for it, but I get the therapist. I need a therapist near me. That's open now. Okay. I'm telling my phone. Um, and then it pops up with your advertisement that says, um, uh, so, okay, wait, I, I, I need, I need, uh, I need to talk to someone about having problems with the, you know, uh, the quarantine, um, right now or whatever. So then the Google search, you know, it's going to pop up like that you're open. Okay. It's going to pop up that you're a therapist and it's going to say, uh, need, uh, quarantine, need quarantine, um, tips or whatever, or need a therapy about quarantine, uh, depression or whatever, that very specific thing that they're searching for is, they click on it, boom, mm -hmm. sweet headline that directly, di directly relates to uh, what they were searching. And it can be dynamic and it can actually change to the actual search that they input, right? So that you're using their own words to, to really get them. And then right under it, boom, you have a quick 30 second video telling them why um, it's really important for them to reach out, have someone to talk to or whatever it is. And then right under it, boom, it's scheduled for a video therapy session and they have to put down a deposit of whatever the deposit is, you know, and then you can capture um, people who need that service who are looking right now on Google for those exact words for that exact service. You know, mm -hmm. and then like, let's say someone gets on the, on the page and they fill out their information. You can even do it different since you said you had a book. You can do this here, sign up with your email and get this free ebook. Right. And then, so you give them that free ebook and then boom, that email and name is instantly in your system. And then you're remarketing to them, which means when they go on Facebook, we hit them with they're they're seeing our video ads, right? They go on Instagram. They're seeing our ads. They go, you know, we hit them with, uh, they start getting email drips and stuff, you know? So it's really about, uh, even when I would do the same thing, even if I was brick and mortar, I would do the same thing. 
I would be targeting people who were searching for my services right now and getting them to book appointments online. I don't even have to talk to this person. They watched my video, you know, and they signed up for more information or they signed up for a, an appointment, you know, even if you do a free 10, 15 minute consultation and then sell them in the consultation for an hour, you know? Um, and then, so they get a free consultation book, you know, or, or whatever it is. And you can do that. I mean, you can deliver that in a ton of different ways. Yeah. And then, like I said, I actually know someone who did, uh, or maybe I don't know them, but I saw I'm looking at all their work, but they did, uh, they have an entire course, you know, they people go on, they pay just a subscription just to watch through their weekly videos they make and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, um, on your website, Jared, and I saw that that video factors heavily into your website. And kind of thinking about what you were saying, what you were sharing with Elizabeth, it's where her business or the way that she builds business is very relational, kind of, you know, face to face in meetings. And so you're kind of taking that, that same way of connecting and you're moving it to video because there is a more uh, you're seeing the person, you're hearing them talk and all of that kind of, you know, kind of stuff. So it makes it a little bit more personal. So Michelle had a question where she says, what, what app do you use for your videos or what, what's that process look like? Oh, uh, like for instance, it just depends what I'm doing. So like right now I'm just using zoom. This is zoom and a green screen. Um, so if you have a green screen, there's a button in zoom that says you have a green screen pop. And then uh, you, you, you select the chroma key. It's called a chroma color. Um, it just basically means green screen color, but you can set it to anything. Back in the day, the reason why they call them green screens is because they used to have to be green to take them out of the video. Now they could be black, it could be, it could be white, it could be whatever. And you can set your own color now because actually back in the day in film, they had to, you know, the, the, you weren't able to edit it like we do now all digitally. But uh, right now it is that the screen actually is green, but it could be any color. Um, so right now what I'm using is Zoom um, to do this conference call, for instance. Um, so that's really, really easy and, I mean, free, based, you know, up to 40 minutes. And then obviously if you have multiple hour sessions, you just buy the premium version. Yeah. And then uh, for other things, I mean, there's other platforms. For instance, we stream uh, sporting events. Um, sporting events basically are a little different than this because I have to have graphics on it. I have to have, like, you know, up in this corner here, there would be a, a score, and there would be team logos and it has to be able to cut to commercial, you know, so I'm talking, Hey, thanks for watching. And then it, uh, uh, here's a commercial from H and media empire and it rolls into commercial, you know? Um, so that's like a real production. And we do that on a software called VMix, V M I X. Um, and that would be, if you want to like have, like, I could be sitting here through that software. I could be sitting here. Like I'm in a news, I could be in the newsroom and I could have a desk in front of me and I could be here I, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So it just depends how much you want to, how, how much you want to do with it. And it's all a pain in the ass to set up. So I, you have to le either literally watch YouTube videos and learn it or uh, have someone do it who does it all the time. Because every single time I set it up, it's a pain in the ass and I know exactly how to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So what about um, people that are doing like Facebook lives or those kinds of things, you know, and they're trying to, um, you know, capture what's coming through people's feeds and, and just, you know, show up basically in people's feeds. What are some ways that you would recommend people do if that's the way they're choosing to connect with folks at, at this particular time? Yeah, so I love Facebook Live, Instagram Live, LinkedIn Live. Uh, there's like a million of them. I even, you know, you know, if your market is people who are in a younger audience, go live on Twitch because there's millions and billions of them on there. What's Twitch? Um, yeah, it's amazing. Twitch is a video game streaming platform. Oh. Um, and people go on there and it's just, it's, it's a young, it's just for video game streaming, but it's really for any kind of entertainment news and you're able to stream yourself on there. And hmm. so if that's your audience, which is a lot of people's audience is the younger age, and that's a great platform that most people don't even know about if they don't play video games. Right. But um, yeah, no, all these platforms are amazing. Go live on them, go live on them every day, three times a day. Just always have my, my advice is, because no one wants to, 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 to talk, to, to, no one wants you to get on there and, you know, people want to have value, you know? So if you're doing lives every single day, three times a day, and you have no viewers, you're wasting your time. Right. Um, I would, 
I would then understand, okay, there's a few things that could be going wrong. Why I don't have viewers. A, my content sucks. Okay. I always want to go there first because that's the most important thing. Have good content, have something great to talk about. People only want to hear you monologue about something that they are interested in. No one cares if it's, it could be, you could be, you can know everything about it or you can, you know, you can have such insight into something, but if it's not to the right audience, you know, I, I could sit here and monologue about business all day, but if I was doing this on Twitch, who, who the guys are going there to play video games, no one's going to watch it because it, they don't care, you know? Mm -hmm. So it would really be to a relevant audience. And so now you say, well, how do I get it to a relevant audience? Now that's a bigger thing. That's, that's creating your audience. So now if you're on social media, for instance, okay, uh, let's take Instagram first. Okay. On Instagram, you know, you're going to take your account, you post relevant, very informational content right on a regular basis. You're using the right hashtags, but really it's a full-time sales platform. Um, you can't just post stuff and people follow you. That's not really how it works. Okay. Uh, even the algorithms don't work like that through Instagram. Basically you have to engage with the populace. You have to engage with the community, which means that account that you're running has to go to other accounts. It has to comment on their stuff. It has to message them. It has to be in their inboxes. It has to be interacting with the community at large. So let's say I have an account that's in the oil and gas industry. Okay. And I would be on LinkedIn, right? And my business would be going and engaging with plutonium engineers. Okay. And commenting on the most notable plutonium engineers content in the world. Every single time, the plutonium engineer with a billion followers says something, I'm going to say something about it every single time. I'm going to be commenting on his posts and there's probably a million of them, right? So all of them, I'm going to pick 20 of them and I'm going to hit 20 this week. I'm going to comment on their posts that are getting over a million views. I'm going to comment on the posts of now the next week, 20 people um, in this subcategory of my industry that are getting over a million views, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to DM a hundred people, who own companies this week, right? Uh, that's how you build an audience. It's building, it's like building a house. It takes work. Mm -hmm. um, it just doesn't exist, you know? Uh, so it's not just, so you have to curate the, curate great content and that's, if, if it's live, your content's what you're gonna say. So you have to be interesting, you know? Um, you have to have a decent view in your screen. It can't be dark. So I would never produce anything or show anything to my clients that, uh, you know, that wasn't, uh, that, that I didn't want to represent my work. You know what I mean? I wouldn't want to show them a half-ass video. Then they might think that my work is half-ass, even though I'm a baker, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm a baker it has nothing to do with this video, but that's how people perceive you. You right. instantly judge someone uh, when you, especially when you see a commercial, because we all hate commercials in general. Um, so you really have to have a fine, a, a fine touch with it, you know? And then, uh, like I said, I, I love using the platforms, go live as much as you can, as often as you can. Just make sure you're building your audience. Make sure you're sending out email blasts to direct people to these lives. Schedule them, make marketing around them, whatever you have to do to make it valuable because uh, I would never ever recommend you as a business owner spending a bunch of your time on something that does not generate a uh, return on investment. Right. And to me, I mean, I value my time very, very expensive. So mm -hmm. I would rather spend $500 than waste an hour of my time doing something I didn't think had value. So how have you changed in this, uh, in this particular environment, being as this is what you do, uh, what have you changed like to, to make sure you're hitting the right market right now that you're getting the biggest bang for your buck? How have you changed over this last month? Yeah, so for us, uh, basically, the great, well, one of the great things about how we're set up is we do service all industries. Um, so we're kind of recession proof. You shut down all the restaurants who are our clients. You know, we do have other clients, but the thing is, you're right. A large portion is still brick and mortar, you know, and lots of people are shut down. Um, you know, we probably put on pause a good 30% of our accounts that were brick and mortar and not able to still operate, mm -hmm. you know, so that hurts my bottom line, obviously, instantly. And obviously everyone's in contract, right? So technically, I don't have to let them pause, right? Technically, by contract, they would have to keep going. But if you're going to be a business that doing business, I always tell people, it's not today, it's not tomorrow. Business is the practice of refining long-term strategy. 
to grow mm-hmm. and, and make more money and increase margin. Okay. Right. So my, in the idea of always being long-term strategy, of course, any client that wanted to pause, I paused them instantly on that day, even 15 days into a month, didn't matter. Pause. As soon as they pick back up, they're going to have 15 days left on that month, all delivered, all set up. No big deal. We just take care of them. Um, so taking care of the clients always paramount. Uh, but besides the fact of just going beyond on the customer service side for our current clients, we need to obviously 30% of my clients just paused, right? So we instantly need to pick up more clients. Um, we need to grow. And then obviously, you know, a certain portion of the market is currently not buying, right? I'm B2B. So you just take all of that into account. And so if you, this is how we market in the first place. So let's say there's 10 different industries. Let's say there's the medical industry. Let's say there's the food, food and beverage industry. Let's say there's the service industry retail, right? We have dedicated marketing campaigns that are very, very targeted and it's all through automation and dynamic content and stuff like that. Um, that actually is completely like, let's say, let's say you're a, a dentist, you know, and, and, and you click on one of our ads, it's going to look completely different than if you were searching for something in another industry. So actually all we did is all the industries that are not currently producing, we shut off the marketing to those industries uh, to save our ad spend. Cause they're not, they're buying at a low percentage. So the ROI isn't there. And then we just took that money and doubled down on all the industries still in business. So we're, you know, hyper targeting, uh, e-commerce, you know, um, we're still going after any, uh, you know, we're, we're targeting, uh, more large business corporations that still have to market during this time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're, we basically just pivoted our target audience, right. you know, to the people who are still open. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and a lot of, uh, like I said, there's, uh, you know, so basically like the kind of popular thing online you always see is if you're running a consulting business or you're running a marketing business or a B2B business, they say, basically it's, I see it everywhere, but they say, you have to be neat. You have to be niche. 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 Like you have to be the expert of marketing, just dentists, the greatest dentist marketer ever. <laughs> eh, it's not true. It's, it's completely false. Actually. It's just another one of those little scams that runs through because to me, if you can't market, like if you say that you're a marketer, right? Or you're, a, you know, this is your business. You're the best. Okay. But for some reason, there's a disconnect between you marketing a dentist and a restaurant. I mean, to me, you don't know what you're doing. I, I'm instantly understanding that you have a low understanding of the actual uh, fundamentals of marketing because the fundamental of marketing sales and all that, it applies across every industry and everything. If, if you can create conversion, on something and understand conversion in business, you can understand conversion in business. It's not, it's not apples and oranges, it's apples and apples. It's the same exact thing. You have to be able to target a specific audience, deliver them a targeted message that is gonna interest them the most and then you have to convert, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I saw on your website um, that you have as one of your services that you offer reputation management. Can you speak a little bit to that? Yeah. So there's different kinds of, uh, PR public relations, right? So, um, reputation management and what you see a lot on the website is actually a digital reputation management. And so now there's a, a clear cut thing between like public relations, for instance, is going to be like your messages to the media you're putting out, you know, to the world, making sure you have good imagery. It's kind of branding through the media, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and through, you know, uh, n- not newsletters, but, you know, press releases and all that kind of stuff. But uh, rep- digital reputation management actually is more of a, it's more of being integrated as a software. So basically imagine this, um, let's say I come to your restaurant or I come to your dentist office or I come and I have a therapy session, right? If I have the best experience ever, what do I do? I just leave and I just have a nice day upon the rest of my day, go have me a nice hamburger and drink a beer and I'm, and I'm done, right? Now, if I have a terrible experience because your receptionist, so, hap- so happened your receptionist that day 
her husband left her, okay? And the person comes in and she fucking is crying and she's a mess, this whole thing. And your customer has to see that. Now, it's not her fault. People have problems in life. You can't, you don't need to be mad at her. You know, you can't be upset with the customer for having seen that. You can't be upset with yourself. You just have to accept that shit happens in life, okay? But just because you accept that shit happens and people will have a bad experience in your business, end of story. If you serve enough clients, someone's gonna have a bad experience. So now, instead of getting upset when someone has a bad experience, you wanna be prepared. So instantly, when someone leaves you know, your business, your dental office, your, your medical office, whatever it is, they get, you know, five, they walk into their car, boom, they get a text message, okay? It says, how was your experience? It says a thumbs up or a thumbs down. They click uh, thumbs up, it enters, instantly directs them, logs them in and everything to leave a review on your Google or whatever, Yelp, whatever you want, okay? So boom, makes it really easy to collect reviews from people who have good experiences because what do people who have good experiences do? They go home and they don't think about you again. Um, so you have to make them think about you. You send them an email and a text to generate that review to get them, you know, working on it. Now, if they have a bad experience, they click thumbs down, right? So now this person had a bad experience. We want to know why. Why do we want to know why? Because we want to improve our business. If you're the kind of business owner who does business with a hundred people, okay? And let's say two people had a bad experience, okay? If you're the kind of business owner who writes that off as, oh, well, those two people don't know what they're talking about. You're a bad business owner. And I'm not saying that every client who has a problem is right. I'm saying that a good business owner investigates every single potential improvement in their business and makes action upon it. So if someone had a bad experience for any reason, you want to read that review, you want to dig in, you want to talk to that person, make it right. Even if, you know, some people are just, you can't make them happy no matter what, and that's fine. But look into it and discover that and try to still make adjustments because yeah. there is still, even in untruth, a bad review that's not really true. There's still ultimate, there's still maybe some truth in there. So yeah. you still want to react to it. So for one, when they press that thumbs down, it's going to bring them to an internal review system where they're able to leave you a, a big review and send it to you. And that comes right to you, you know, your cell phone or your email or whatever. So you're able to then make action upon it and it doesn't end up on Google. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a reputation management digital software. It basically mm -hmm. captures uh, reviews from people that visit your business. And then it gets it to Facebook, Google, Yelp, and all okay. the big sites. And then it kind of filters out the bad ones. So you, know, you can manage smart. that. A little that's bit. A, exactly. And you can see it all in one place. And then also you can integrate, it's a, it's a whole software. So you can integrate your whole email list. Like, let's say you have uh, 200 current clients or previous clients, past clients or uh, ongoing clients or whatever it is. You can actually insert them into the system and it'll do a slow email drip and just drip out a few of them a day for a few months. Mm -hmm. So that for even from your past clients, you could build up all those reviews and capture all that data. Because as soon as you hop on Google, what's your, if, if, if I go, you can even go to my, uh, go to my, uh, our HMD Instagram right now. And you can see there's a few videos on this. They say, okay, Google, you know, and you say, uh, uh, therapists open now near me. Okay. Google instantly pops up. I wonder if I could bring it up on my phone. Yeah. I'll show you just an example. A few locations for open. See, I told you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Google. Therapists open now near me. Okay, here are business hours for therapists near me. So I don't know if you can see, but it if you're only, due to COVID give it your only shows a, call before you go. a few, right? Mm -hmm. So that's going to be determined by, you know, many different factors, but you can easily beat these guys. You see the guy on top. I don't know if you can see, but he has 76 reviews. Mm -hmm. That's probably why he's on top, right? right? Because the guy below him has three. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so not only is it going to up your search, you know, having all generating all this good traffic and reviews and customers talking about your business. But if I'm deciding between these three practices, I instantly know I'm never going to see a therapist who has a 3.3 star. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just not going to do it personally because there's someone right next to him who has a five star. Mm-hmm. 
And why would I use a three star when I could do a five star? Bet you their prices are the same, you know? Right, right. So that's how important it is. I mean, you lost a customer. Yes. You know, just that. So Jarrett, in, in light of what's going on in, in our last remaining few minutes here, um, what are you doing for people in, in light of this, uh, of this pandemic? Are you offering any special services or, or any, any other special? Yeah, actually, so right now, what we've been able to do is we're offering all graphic design services to people who are being affected uh, by the pandemic, um, completely free, actually. So we're doing all graphic design. If you need your logo redesigned, you need some business cards, you need flyers, you need some, you know, any, I mean, anything you could think of for your branding, for your I mean, for advertisements, all the graphic design is free. We're not doing uh, any of the, we're not doing like posting for social media or the actual web development or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we've been able to do is graphic design. And so you can really, it's a great time to rebrand your business, you know, if you're looking a little dated, you know, if you want to spruce it up and be able to come back strong or, you know, be a little bit more competitive online right now. If you're transitioning to online, you want to refresh your brand, we'd be happy to, happy to take care of you guys. Like, no, no problem at all. That's very, that's super generous. So how, how do people get a hold of you? What's the best way to reach you? So the best way is you either just go to the website and submit a form or you just emails is great. I mean, you can take it down right now, or I mean, it's mine's just Jarrett, J A R R E T T at H M B D empire.com. It's H M B D empire. Yeah. yeah. H as in hat, M as in Mary, B as in ball, D as in dog empire. You know, like the empire from Star Wars, you know, like the Sith and the, the whole thing, you know. So does anyone else have any um, final questions for Jared before we wrap this up today? Anything else in the, I don't see anything coming up in the chat. So I think you've answered everything that was, uh, was on our minds there. So any last words that you have for us, Jared? No, I mean, just thank you guys so much for your time. Um, literally, you have my email. If anyone ever has any questions, I don't care if it's about submitting uh, for the disaster loan or anything like that, anything in the world, business related, or even if you just need to have questions, like I'm super happy to help. Uh, if I don't know everyone I work, everyone who works for me is way smarter than I am. So someone will know, you know, so we really, we're really just, we're really just here to help and like would love to help with anything that anyone is having any trouble with at all. So we're, we're, our doors are open that's all. Well, thank you so much, Jarrett, for spending uh, some valuable time with us and sharing some really valuable insights here. So um, everybody, make sure you go out and check out the website. It's a really good website. There's lots of good videos on there, lots of good content, and it's hmbdempire.com. And then I look forward to seeing all of you on a future Ask Me Anything or any of our other Women Lead Online forums that are brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. And until we all meet again, stay safe, stay inside, take care of yourself, take care of your family. Bye, Jarrett. Thanks again.